Welcome to the podcast. My name is Dr. Noor Gajraj. Let's talk about unraveling neurodegenerative diseases, the two competing hypotheses. The core pathology across many of these diseases involves the accumulation of abnormal protein aggregates within or outside neurons. They are characterized by the gradual loss of structure and function of neurons, ultimately leading to their death. This neuronal degeneration results in a progressive decline in abilities, depending on the brain regions affected. Cognitive decline, memory loss, thinking, judgment, language changes, for example, in Alzheimer's and other dementias. Motor impairment, difficulties with movement, balance, coordination, tremors, stiffness, muscle weakness, for example, in Parkinson's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, behavioral and psychiatric changes, mood swings, apathy. Key players, the pathogenic proteins. Specific proteins central to these diseases have been identified. These proteins, when misfolded or aggregated, become pathological hallmarks. Tau, a cytoskeletal protein, a key building block in the neurofibrillary tangles, characteristic of Alzheimer's disease and other tauopathies like frontotemporal lobe dementia, FTLD, and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE. Alpha synuclein, a major component of Lewy bodies, the protein aggregates characteristic of Parkinson's disease and dementia. TDP43, TDP43 inclusions are a pathological hallmark of sporadic ALS, ALS with dementia, and some frontotemporal lobe dementia. Amyloid beta, protein fragments that accumulate into plaques famously associated with Alzheimer's disease. The synaptic spread model. Evidence supporting this includes post-mortem studies in Parkinson's patients who received fetal tissue transplants. Young, healthy, grafted neurons later developed Parkinson's-like pathology, alpha synuclein inclusions, suggesting spread from the diseased host brain. In vitro and animal models, studies have shown that injections of tau or alpha synuclein fibrils into mice can lead to widespread protein aggregates far from the injection site, implying spread along neuronal connections. Mechanisms of spread. Proposed mechanisms include transfer via small vesicles called exosomes, tunneling nanotubes between cells, or even raw protein leakage across the synapses, which are then taken up by adjacent cells or even glial cells. The selective vulnerability model. This theory proposes that certain populations of neurons are inherently more susceptible to degeneration due to intrinsic characteristics that make them vulnerable to stress. Intrinsic susceptibility even if the pathogenic proteins are present throughout the brain, certain neurons may be more prone to accumulate aggregates. Many researchers argue that both synaptic spread and selective vulnerability are likely at play in these complex diseases with their relative contributions still being fully elucidated. Critiques of the synaptic spread hypothesis include lack of direct human observation, direct synaptic spread of pathogenic proteins has not been definitively observed in vivo in living humans. Artificiality of some models. Some animal models use artificially inflated levels of proteins which may not perfectly reflect human disease progression. Alternative explanations for spread. Even if pathology appears to spread, it could be due to other factors like metabolic factors diffusing across synapses or glial cells taking up proteins. Advanced neuroimaging illuminating the brain. 
recent technological advancements, particularly in neuroimaging, are providing exciting new tools to investigate these hypotheses in unprecedented detail. New radio tracers. We now have advanced tracers for positron emission tomography, PET imaging, that can specifically detect and visualize amyloid beta and tau pathology in living brains, a significant leap from older tracers like FDG, which measures glucose metabolism. PET MRI hybrid imaging, this combines the strengths of both technologies. PET, excellent sensitivity for biomolecular probes like protein tracers. MRI provides superb structural and anatomical resolution. Simultaneous imaging, by collecting PET and MRI data simultaneously in the same space, these hybrid scanners overcome limitations of separate imaging, offering granular in vivo evidence. This allows researchers to precisely localize and analyze pathological changes and metabolic activity together, providing crucial insights into how these diseases unfold in living patients. Implications for treatment and future directions. Understanding these mechanisms has direct implications for developing more effective treatments. Targeting protein aggregation. If synaptic spread is key, therapies might focus on preventing the misfolding or spread of these proteins. Protecting vulnerable neurons. If selective vulnerability is dominant, treatments could aim to enhance the resilience of specific neuronal populations or address underlying metabolic vulnerabilities. Precision medicine. As these technologies advance, we might be able to identify specific mechanisms at play in individual patients, leading to more personalized and precise therapeutic strategies. Importance of all research. The ongoing debate underscores the necessity for continued vigorous research into both the synaptic spread and selective vulnerability hypotheses. Even seemingly negative results, like those from early clinical trials, provide crucial information that shapes future efforts. So, neurodegenerative diseases remain a formidable challenge. While the exact mechanisms of their progression are still being fully elucidated, the leading hypotheses of synaptic spread and selective vulnerability offer critical frameworks for understanding this complexity. It is highly probable that both mechanisms are at play to varying degrees in these diseases. Advances in neuroimaging and the dedicated efforts of researchers worldwide provide immense hope. Well, thank you for listening to this talk. Uh, please consider buying my new book, 100 Pathways to Longevity, and subscribing to this channel. Thank you very much indeed.